I don't know what's wrong with this dude. I'm telling the real. If real, if you yeah, real makes you that dude, dude makes you feel sick, you I don't know what it. That ain't no real. It's like the honest, it's the honest <laughs> truth. That's cap. Ain't this what they've been waiting for? You ready? Uh. Uh. I used to pray for times like this, to rhyme like this, so I had to grind like that, to shine like this, in a matter of time I spent on some locked up in the back of the paddy wagon, cuffs locked on wrist, see my dreams unfold, nightmares come true, it was time to marry the game, and I said, yeah, I do, if you want it, you gotta see it with a clear eye view, got shorty, she try and bless me like I said, I chew, like a sneeze, Please for them trick squeeze, I'm getting cream. Never let them no. get in between and we'll be started. Look, but I'm lying hearted. They love me when I was stuck in their head. Lawson, the US champion this year. I'm an artist, no crawling, went straight to walking with foreigns in my garages or foreign menage. Can suck in the swallowing anything for it. Jerry and Lawson will also be competing later tonight in the 100 meter final. His fourth jump. I did for Mariah. Low down on fire. Ice loss. It goes 28, 1 and 3 quarters. He closed out his collegiate career at Arkansas by winning the 100, the 200, and the 400. Again from the USA, Jarian Lawson winning with a round three jump, which was a very convincing victory indeed. 8 meters 19. What you talking about? Gangsta moving silent. And I don't talk a lot. I don't say a word. I don't say a word was on my grind and now I got what I deserve. Hold on, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished. When I bought a ass tomorrow, y'all thought it was winning. Flexing on him. Some like Papa on his finish. Double M, yeah, that's my team. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to a very special exclusive edition of the Power Hour with Huff and Gil. First off, Gil, it's your birthday, man. Happy birthday, dog. I forgot about oh, that. Yeah, Happy man. birthday, man. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh. oh, man, it's fun. Happy birthday. It's Jack Lockett Dixon Street tonight. <laughs> hey, man, what, what's Frank Thomas? What year is this? 35. Woo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm old out here. Frank Thomas, boy, you getting up there. But no, nah, oh, yeah. we do. We got my boy, man, my brother from another mother. Jerry ain't lost some with us, man. U.S. Olympic long jumper. What's up with you, Jay Law, baby? All right, man. Nothing much. It's all good this way. You know what I'm saying? Trying to relaxing, training, doing what I do best. Staying out the way. Staying out of trouble. Most important. <laughs> <laughs> Understood, man. Hey, appreciate you pulling up on us virtually on the Power Hour, man. You know, I know you got to sure. read the schedule, getting ready to head out to Serbia. You know what I'm saying? So, appreciate you taking some time out your schedule, man, and joining me and Gil, bro. But uh, just kind of go ahead. I know everybody really know who you are, but go ahead and introduce yourself just in case there are some people who's listening who may not know who you are. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm Jerry and Lawson. I was born in Texas, Texas, 27 years old. I uh, went to the University of Arkansas. Oh, hold on, let me back up. Went to Liberty Island High School. Yeah. <laughs> then, went to U- <laughs> then went to University of Arkansas, uh, run track, ran, ran there for four years, 2012, 2016. Uh, 16 was when I went into my professional career, hit the Olympics, uh, got fourth. 2017, uh, got silver at the World Championships in London. Uh, 2018, I was suspended uh, wrongly. Yeah. I was innocent, but but it happened anyway, and so I was able to uh, get that turned over in, in 2020, and so now I'm back. Got injured in 21 uh, at the Olympic trials, and so I'm back uh, doing my thing, competing on the world stage, and it's good to be back. So we we do see you clearly won the uh, U.S. Long Jump Championship a few weeks ago, and that was that's what qualified you to go compete in Serbia to represent the U.S. So how to talk about that experience, man. That's your what? Your your real first big track meet back since your injury, you know what I'm saying? And the suspension, you know what I'm saying? Really both sides of the Talk about that journey, bro, and, you know, and how excited you are to, you know, get to go represent your country and yourself, bro, in a couple weeks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think first, let me 
Let me put some importance on how hard it was to, to train while being suspended. Uh, you know, in, in this life of profession, whatever your profession is, you know, an opportunity is taken away. You know, that kind of questions why why put the work behind it if you're not going to be able to showcase it. Uh, and so, yeah, I had to, you know, I continued to train. I was diligent from in the 18 to uh, kind of mid-2020, uh, which was important for me. Just important to, to keep my performance. Uh, you know, things get a lot harder if you take some years off and you try and start back <laughs> where you left off. Oh, yeah. You know, it gets kind of, impo- yeah, they, they get kind of hard. But, uh, yeah, I was able to train through those years. And so coming into this year, uh, I did, number one, made sure I got myself healthy. Uh, me and coach always say availability is the best ability. So, you know, took care of things on that end with therapy, uh, taking care of my body. And so now I, I, I'm able right now to uh, operate at full speed, full performance like I want to. Uh, and so we went into the track meet, what was it, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was some nervousness, of course, not not as far as how we do in the competition, but just it being my first major competition. Uh, really back on the scene, being healthy, uh, not knowing what my performance would be. I think when you when you are a high performer, you know you you may get a little anxious, but the anxiousness is is because you prepare so much and you expect an outcome. And then, you know it's like track is a little different with sports in general. It's not about who's the best; it's about who's the best on that exact day at that time. And so I uh, went into it. My coach wasn't able to travel with me. Uh, body feeling good. I think that was the most important thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the, the track meet itself was a little, I mean, not to my liking. Uh, I mean, obviously I produced a big jump on the last jump. He would like to get those off a little earlier. Uh, but nevertheless, I mean, I have, I've been there before where the last jump needed to be the jump. Uh, and so he was able to work some things out and able to produce what I what I knew I could produce going into that track meet. You know, I was happy to come out uh, on top and go go medalist and, and book my ticket to Serbia, where uh, you know I'll be competing in the World Indoor Championships next Friday. So, so Jerry, I got some quick questions. Yep. I know. So I was at Arkansas before you, right? So, are you do you train with like Tyson and Wally and those guys? Uh, I've trained around Wally, not really with him, uh, yeah. just because you know separate coaches. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Wallace, Wallace been at the track since maybe my sophomore junior year in college. So, yeah. you know that that relationship was established early on in my career. Tyson, I did not meet yeah. until Olympics uh, when I was running the hundred made the relay team. We had the uh, relay camp in Houston. And so that's when I got to know Tyson. And of course, you know, we both knew we went to Arkansas. We both knew we were on top of the school record holders. Uh, and so, yeah, we established that record relationship in 16. And he actually texted me a couple of times when I was suspended, just checking up on me. And so, yeah, yeah, both both of those uh, great athletes and their relationships established there. So, uh, so you a 59 baby, man. We, we pass your house all the time. Tyler, <laughs> pretty, pretty long house right there, man. Sure. <laughs> but like, so what is it like to have worked yourself to the position with guys like Wally, I'm gonna call him a Wally Tyson, uh, those other guys around the, the Randall Tyson that you work out with? What is it like to, you know, how did it, is it self-fulfilling? Like, what is it like? Do you, I, I know you still got a lot more to work for, but we all root for you down here, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, to be honest, I mean, it may seem a little dry, but it always seems just like another day of work. I think, uh, in part, what what helped me get to where I am was, you know, I always focus so much on the the minute details, uh, the work being put in, and not so much the outcome. And even when I did get my desired outcomes, as far as ascending from high school to college, uh, you know, you kind of you kind of get you know five to ten minutes of of glory and then you're like okay what's next because it's like you know i got there but now i want to get back there like i'm gonna feel that again and so what's next uh but I, but i will say 2016 uh making the olympic team being on the team with people i've watched for so long uh that was probably the one moment where it's like okay i'm on 
I'm on the big stage and, and it actually made me be, just become a little more sensitive and aware of how good I was. I think because I focus so much on the work, you don't really stop to take in what you're doing, what you've accomplished. And it's like, okay, I see y'all, I know how good y'all are. And I've worked my way up onto this stage. And so it's like, okay, okay, we, we, we done made it, we, we here. <laughs> Yeah. And it and it actually just provided a lot more mo motivation. Uh, Cause yeah, you, you get there, you want to stay there. You don't want to just catch a glimpse and be the one telling the story about you know where I was, I was there, but couldn't put no work behind it, so I didn't get to stay there. So uh, we had a Black History Month uh, program, right? And the yeah. very last person, I was trying to figure out who this little skinny kid was with the track uniform <laughs> and why I had LE. And I was like, you know, I, I was kind of lost that person. I had to think, I was like, oh yeah, Jerry Lawson went to school here. So like, does any of that stuff ever like hit you? Maybe when you riding down Weddington or, well, you know, anything like the MLK getting something to eat or some Andes or something like, does that hit you? Man, a lot of stuff. Uh... I, I, I'll say this, when I got, before I got suspended, not much hit me, because, you know, life starts moving so fast. Especially you know, at your level. Yeah, it's one thing after another, and then, you know, you just, you run it into stuff, and if you, you're doing things that, that you set forth as goals, then, yeah, I mean, you're hitting accomplishments, and then it's like, okay, by the time you're happy about that, it's time to start this thing over and get back into another year of training. Uh, and so I think suspension, one thing I will say, it taught me how to reflect back and realize current situations and where I'm at. Uh, and so, yeah, now I do I do have a downtime where I just think about, you know, if I if I go back home and my mom and if anybody knows my mom, she got stuff up on the walls, just down the hallway, I mean, around the chimney. <laughs> I mean, it's just everywhere you can, <laughs> yeah, everywhere you can think of in the house. Uh, and I and I will say being suspended after after a little bit, probably about 12, 12 to fifteen months. I had been away from my last success for so long. You start to forget, you know, who you are, how good you are, what you accomplished in the past. And I think I took a trip home one time, and they weren't even there. They were up here at my house, and I just told her, I was like, I need to go back to the house. And I, I went back. Seeing all my trophies, you know, seeing news articles and stuff, and it's like, okay, let me let me remind myself of, you know, what I can do, where I belong, uh, and even to the first question Tyler asked uh, about the uh, USA Championships up in Washington. Yeah, it was like, man, it was good to be out there competing with the big dogs in our event because for the most part, uh, the top four, top five long jumpers were at that competition in the U.S. Uh, and then again, I just had to remind myself, like, wait a minute, I'm a big dog. Like, I look at everybody else, and it's like, okay, no, I'm, I'm one of them that people come in, they got to worry about when it, if we got to get top three. It's like, oh, I got to count day long. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. Yeah. What, what's been your biggest motivation? Because you, you, you say all that, you know, you've been through so much, bro. Like, what's been your biggest motivation along the journey, bro? Um... Now I think my motivation has changed. Before, before 2016, it was always, and I want the Olympic gold medal. And I think I got so zoomed in on the Olympic gold medal, I never planned out the goals for what I want to do in college as far as you know, winning 100, 200 long jump. Never thought about any of that. I never thought about being a professional athlete. Like I didn't even know they came with it. I just like, oh, I'm gonna get there. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know nothing about no signing contracts, shoe deals, clothes, yeah. deal, whatever. Like it was just, it was Olympic gold, Olympic gold, Olympic gold. And I think after 16, you know, I count that as a, as a loss, not so much a failure, but getting forced with the hand drag or fingertips, whatever it was. Uh, coming back in 17, that served, 16 served as motivation for 17. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, being suspended, and now my motivation is proving to myself that, okay, I'm back, but I can be back and better. 
Yeah. And not just be trying to get back to where I left, but come back and be better than I was. And I got I got some numbers in my head, man. I you know it's not for me. Of course, I want to win gold medals, but I want that world record. I think I think that that's the already twenty eight feet, love. <laughs> right, I just I just need another foot, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, easy to oh, easy to say, you but win the world record and come back on. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. He recording, so I'm gonna hold you to it. <laughs> Absolutely, but yeah, now you know that, that world record is in my sight because I think that's. I mean, that's that's. It was the gold Olympic gold medal. Now it's okay. I want to be up there, cream of the crop, and, and be that nine-minute jump first man to ever do that. And, and most importantly, I mean, I think it's, it's possible. I think I bring uh, something to the long jump that not not many have, which is my speed. You know, I can go under 10 seconds in a 100 meter dash. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I do think that's, that's something that can be reached. And that's something I go to, go to work with, go to the track with every day. Like, Dude looked surprised when you said it, like he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Struggle with this dude. <laughs> I guess he forgot you're the only guy that's in the same conversation with Jesse Owens. You know what I'm saying? It's him and Jesse Owens in the same conversation. You know, he did win. I didn't know. I know. He won it and the long jump all in the same track meet. I mean, come on. That ain't normal. When he said under 10 seconds in 100, he said that with so much confidence. (laughs) Bro, did you run like a 9-9 before y'all see you? Yeah, 9-9-90. Come on. And this was like, he was a first time sprinter when he did this. This wasn't like he didn't sprint, but. Okay, and let me be honest, that. this year, this year I, I plan to be back in the 100 top of my game, 110 <laughs> seconds. Wow. Okay. So, cool. <laughs> yeah. so okay. So, I, I'm not going to call your, I'm going to call your situation at first, still, okay? Right, right. So, uh, because we, you know, man, they tried to, they tried to, uh, they tried to make you into a big bad monster, which you weren't. You need to be prepared. You need to be on the people that prepared it or whatever. Or how we process right. food in America, or whatever. Them the folks that fought. Them the folks that should have that should have been vindicated, uh, victim. You know, whatever. How, the, yeah, how yeah. they painted you into the media. How I at that point in time had to paint you as a member of the media. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I yeah, figured out yeah. that. You from the crib? I ain't even doing all that. So, um, so you faced that versus? Did you say a hand drag kept you from winning the Olympics? I remember that. But I don't in remember sixteen, what yeah. yeah, yeah, it was made the jump, but I had a hand hit the sand back there or a fingertip. Yeah, so you had a fingertip, whatever happened then. Then you had some adversity happen later. I think I remember you coming to the track when I was with those young men doing footwork drills with Trey during the pandemic. We called mm-hmm. the Breakfast Club, the Smoothie, and you would come. Yeah, I think yeah. you got Red Hellcat. Yep. First I had time ever, Huh? <laughs> I had it. Yeah, I had it. Okay, first one. time I ever seen a Hellcat because you used to come through and scared. I'm like, who? Can't afford that around here. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? But you would always go yeah, straight yeah. to the weights, and not, I didn't know who. You know, I was like, damn, somebody got Hellcat. But anyways, what kept you motivated? Because when people reach their pits in their life, it's easier to fold and quit. You already had enough money. You're a modest guy, humble guy. You got enough already. What kept you motivated and driven? to get to back to where you are now. You finna catch a flight to Serbia over in the cold. You got your beard going. You ready? Yeah, yeah, definitely. What you motivated? I think a few things. Uh, One, I would say I had spiritual fulfillment. Uh, You know, I I had a, I was raised up in church, but you know, I think there's a certain age where you got to take on that personal relationship with God for yourself. Uh, And I I, I had that in place. And so it was easy for me. I won't say easy, but it, it, at some point I understood what was going on. I had perspective, perception, uh, and I knew, you know, this, this life is not supposed to be all wins, 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 wins. I think everybody wants to be five and up, six and up, seven and up. Uh, I think at that point in time, my, my thought process was it's not about being undefeated. It's about taking the L and, and seeing if you can get back up and take another W. Uh, and so, yeah, I would say one, spiritual fulfillment, two, no question, my support system. I think it was important to have those group of people that not only, I say close to me, but was close enough to know 
without me having to tell. They, they could they could see what was in the media, see what picture was being painted, and just be like, no, nah, there gotta be something. Which, it, which it was an unfair picture, brother. It wasn't unfair to you. And I believe if you look like Ron Lochte, he robbed someone at the Olympics or or anyone else that looks like Ron Lochte, that you wouldn't have been painted that way. The story wouldn't have ran that many times. And it was just something to, you know. Absolutely, and, I, and I'll say this. I don't think it was so much, I, I will say it wasn't so much uh, the color of my skin. Where I, one, I would want people to understand who I was dealing with was the world anti-doping agency, not the United States anti-doping right. agency. Right. Uh, and so I think the world anti-doping agency just, I think they have something against America in general because we take up so much Olympic medals, uh, just anything, world medals in any yeah. sport, gymnastics, track and field, swimming, whatever it is. And I think uh, they have some issues with Russia as a country. You know, that documentary came out and I think they've been trying to prove themselves as a credible as a credible company. Right. Um, and so they've been coming after some American athletes. And so if that would be in the United States, they wouldn't have put anything out in the media until the final decision had been made. Yeah. But because it was World Anti-Doping Agency, they felt stuff needed to be released. Because then the USA, they cleared you. The USA Dope includes you, right? Well, well, USA was never in it because they weren't the ones who initiated the test. Gotcha. It, yeah, it came from World Anti-Doping Agency. And so, you know, you're dealing with Europeans, Asians, people that are not American. Yeah. Um, that have a grudge against somebody sitting on a high seat in America. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, they do anything. I mean, before me, they had had like 220 some cases and were all guilty. Uh, and you gotta, you gotta understand, I mean, the drug test. All they have to do, they don't have to defend anything. No, you don't want to fail the drug no. test, you know what I'm saying? And so they yeah. just got to make up anything. Um, Does that make you more cautious how you move? Because, man, you up there with good food, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You might want to go to Hugo's or Bordino's or Herman's, Mermaid's. Like, does that or JJ's Grill. Like, does that make you, you can't go to JJ's anymore. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to think about, man, you got too much. What if somebody back there playing? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it did a couple things. One, it, it made me tighten up just my diet in general uh, as it relates to my sport. Just being a little more fit, I feel like I could, I could clean some stuff up. And I think that was in part because once that situation happened, I had to start logging my food. So, it, you know, if it popped up again, it's like, well, you know, I ate this at 2.35 p.m. You know what I'm saying? So we know what's going on uh, and we can backtrack. Uh, and so, yeah, one, it helped me with my diet just in general. Two, I don't necessarily uh, hide from restaurants, but I do, I will be a little more cautious to eat steak. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was in, in, in the, from the get-go, right, B? Uh, I love pork, man. I love my ribs, man. You know, oh, boy, you scared. <laughs> you scared uh, me with that, man. But, but I, I mean, I eat brisket and stuff. It's the, it's in it, steak in general. Cause you know, you good steak, you get medium, medium well. And when you, you know, if something is in there, you haven't cooked it long enough for it to get out. And so, you know, I may eat it for like, you know, once, twice during the year, but I, I, I can't stay away from that. And anything that's not, yeah, yeah I've been cooking it real. Like. <laughs> And, and I stay away from anything that's not American, maybe. Yeah. I ain't yeah. no solution. I ain't trying to know Asian for Oh, uh, that's out the way. Yeah, yeah. I will say, you've done Y'all a lot do. of, like, you know, you've done a lot of charity work, a lot of philanthropic work, you know, throughout your time as a professional, giving back to the community, giving back Christmas events, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've been fortunate to, you know, witnessed those events with my own physical eyes. So, you know, I've seen the impact that you've made as a professional. Just kind of talk about what are some of your goals outside of track and field? What are some of the goals you want to accomplish just as a, as a human? Man, it's a few things I got on the board that I'm currently taking off. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for some odd reason, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. 
but it's been bugging me for a couple of years to just to start a trucking company. Just fair enough. And, and not not anything too big, like just a fleet of five trucks. Yeah. And I and I think in a bigger picture, uh, I have an architectural mindset. I like to do like to build things. Uh, a lot of people know in my last house, I built my own theater room. Yeah. And so uh, eventually, I think as far as like a day-to-day -day job, that's something I can do. Be a con be a contractor. Yeah. And I think I think in part having a trucking company, <laughs> I can control my own shipping. Yeah. For what I need for for, for houses, right? Uh, I want to build an athletic sports place. Something a little different than I I think. Uh, most people. Where are you gonna of. build it at? <laughs> uh, that's the question. I mean, I'll be honest. The smart place would be to build it up here in North of Arkansas. Oh, there's enough. There's enough. We need one on the island. <laughs> <laughs> Who said there's enough? There's enough. Yeah. Hey, you got the yeah. Randall Tyson. You got uh, Fayetteville FAC. Well, no, we need I, one on the island. I say the best place is one. Uh, I mean, being honest, there's a lot more money up here. Yeah, for sure, for sure. It, it's, it's growing uh, pretty fast. And yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest, you, <laughs> kids that are less talented usually are the ones that are enrolled into- No doubt. Facilities that can provide expertise, right? right? You got, if you're good enough talented, right, if you're good enough talented, look, you're going, you're going to high school coach. Yeah. Cause yeah, I mean to be honest, there's not much you need, uh, and there's not much you want to have at too early of an age. Yeah. Uh, college, college coaches, a lot of athletes need to know. College coaches, I mean, if you already painted and sealed coming out of high school, and they feel there's nothing they can teach you to make you better, I mean, you better be number one in the country. Yeah, you were number one in the country, just to be honest with you, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and and the good thing the good thing about it was I had no real coaching yet. Yeah. So the coach is looking at me like, oh, we fix that. Do this. He can do this. Yeah. Uh and I'll be honest, I didn't talk to my coach enough to know. He did not expect me to jump as far as I jumped. Yeah, yeah. Being twenty eight feet. Yeah. I mean I jumped twenty five in high school. But you know, he thought I could jump 27, but he had never coached a 28 foot jumper. And I remember I walked in his office my senior year and he asked me specifically, what what do you want your goals to be? I said, I want to run nine nine. I want to run nine nine, I want to jump 28 feet and I, I want to run the 200. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And, and he, he painted a training plan for the year and it, it worked out at different times, but it, it worked out for sure. I got one more question for you. I know Earl would probably like this question too. Why Arkansas? I mean, because I know, you know, you had a lot of offers. Because it's the greatest university. It's trash. Yeah, I, I remember the day you committed to Arkansas. That's crazy, bro. I remember the day you committed. I know you, you know, I, you know, I knew. Well, well, so, he was a smart so, brother. That's why. You told me he was smart. I had, a, I had, uh, I mean, I had a lot of offers, but I only took three visits. Texas a and Alabama, Arkansas. Well, and Arkansas, didn't pick actually, Texas a <laughs> Arkansas was actually uh, the last ones to come or to recruit me. Uh, and so, yeah, I had my mind that I was going to Alabama. Yeah. Because at the time, the elite coaches were trying to talk to a ball track. You could do both and it's like oh you know it seems cool and i'll be honest i ain't really care about football just because i hadn't really been growing up like that like yeah. just in did, you football. Have football? did you have a lot of football offers i wouldn't say a lot not as much as track yeah a few. how many how many football offers did you have uh i mean probably like seven eight See Earl, this thing—he was an all-state corner, dude. You—you you better be glad you wasn't around when, when he was. He was. A school. That's what I'm talking. Seven or eight. Name some schools. Name two or three schools. Uh, the first school was SMU. He actually came to practice. Yeah. And coach told me run a sweep, and he was like, "I give a full scholarship." Uh, I think SMU, Missouri. Missouri, Missouri. Yeah, Missouri. Missouri. Yeah, I'm in uh, Missouri. 
few. And then, I mean, there had been a good talk about me playing defense back at Alabama, which is, you know, I took that visit. Yeah, I had took that visit. And I had toured both football and track. Uh, and I don't really remember any any other ones like that. Uh, so you legit could have played Power 5 football? Oh, absolutely. I, I, would, I would have played in the SEC. That's wild. But, but, but honestly, I mean, being recruited by football is not, not something I saw that Coach Hooker, I believe, was just like, Jerry, I think you need to consider going to college for football. And he was like, you know, these colleges – Good ones to look at Wyoming, everybody was going to Wyoming at, at the point in time. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, it was nothing. I mean, I didn't even make my own highlight reel. It was just, you know, kind of something they was doing for me. Uh, but track, as soon as I hit, what is it, the, it, well, back then it was July 1st, going into your senior year. Live period. Yeah, they could, they could call. Yeah. I mean, the first day, the first day, I'm at Summer Trade Meet. Phones ringing off the hook. Hold on, hold on. This, this is Florida. Hold this is Alabama. Hold on, hold on. Take it in. People think you just all of a sudden appeared on the radar. Nah, dog. You've been jumping and running since we was kids, like real talk. So, you know what I'm saying? So, just kind of talk about Absolutely. talk about that experience, like, as a youngster, you know, competing and then ended up a professional athlete. Yeah, I, I think one I started. Well, let me tell you, how I started track first. Of all. I was I was really good at baseball. Yeah. And uh, my team that year had went all the way to the championship, whatever we lost. Uh, and our coach decided he wasn't gonna coach the next year. And the way the league worked, you know, it was set. It was set for coaches, and they got to pick their own team. And usually, if you already had a team for last year, you just renew those same. You know players, yeah. but since he didn't, since he didn't come back, you know we just kind of got dispersed. And I went to some coach that wanted me yeah. real bad, but then he already had somebody playing my position. Sound about right. And, and, and I'll be honest, I won't, I won't be real. It was some little big kid out there, you know, playing. Yeah. <laughs> that obviously out there wasn't better than me, but you know he he been there. Uh, and so first game we go to play. And everybody come out to see me on this new team, and he set me on the bench the whole game. Yeah, I didn't even get to like back. Set me. I mean, I was the only one Politics. the whole game. <laughs> uh, and you know, you know, Pop Lawson got mad. He yeah, called yeah, politics, he, man. Yeah. We we got back to the house the same right after the game. He called him. He's like my son. And. He wasn't gonna let me sit at the house, and so Twin City Trade Club had a little ad in the newspaper. You seen? Shout out to him. Like, we gonna go out. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Twin City. <laughs> he he made me go out there, so I started running. Uh, I think for anybody, which was my thing, you struggle with finding your identity and what you're good at. Trey got so many much. Trey got so much going on. I mean, he did throw it. You can run two miles if you want to, you know what I'm saying? You, you can sprint, jump, what, I mean, you know, whatever. So it's like, okay, what are you good at? Yeah. And, and then the question becomes, what do you like versus what your parents like you to do? Yeah. Uh, my mama really wanted me to be a 400 meter run. I mean, even when, even when I was creaming the crop at the 100 and 200, she would enter me in that 400 meter. Uh, Jumping came Coach Allen. Shout out to Coach Allen. Shout out to him, man, for sure. Um, uh, he was like, Lawson, you, you can get out here and do this triple jump. <laughs> uh, I was like, well, I don't know about no triple jump. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, he got me started doing triple jump. And it, a lot of people don't know, I actually did not long jump until, like, my junior year. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I was doing triple jump and I had became good at triple jump. Yeah, I remember. And then I had won Junior Olympics in triple yeah, jump. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it was it was Coach. You know, I may have been Coach Nobody or Coach D. I'm going to put you at long jump, too. Yeah. And so, all right, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, I think through, through the years from age 12 to 18, stuff changed. You know, I ran the 400. Was okay. I wasn't just, yeah. you know, 
cream the crop as far as the country goes at my age. Uh, I picked up the 100 and 200, kind of 16, 17. Um, triple jump always kind of had that. And then long jump came at the end. Uh, and I'll never forget, you know, Atlanta trained me, right? That's the, that's the creme de the creme. That's true. Uh, <laughs> Spring break. Yep. Spring break. Most most people coming out of basketball season, you know, yep. it's our first time seeing each other out of yep. all the schools in the city there. Like, yeah, we're going to see who the fastest is today. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll never forget. I went to triple jump and the board was too short. Yeah. Like my, my one of my feet landed in the sand. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and to make you a board. So, I remember that. Yeah, they, they, oh, they so had to make so that's so the Jerry and Lawson board is true. That's Atlanta. true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. They made me a board for district. Earl, the district I, was always in Atlanta. Earl, you got any specific questions for my boy? Oh man, I just when he we go break this record, he promised me he'd come back. That's all I'm waiting on. You talking about so you gonna name the track after? <laughs> huh? You talking about you gonna name the track after? I had to see it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, we gonna talk about that off camera because you know I, could, I do want to name the Jerry and Lawson track. You know what I'm saying? We are gonna talk about that later though. I could, and yeah. he deserves to go in the Hall of Fame, but we are gonna talk about that later too. But you know, nah, nah, for sure. So yeah, I, uh, of course everybody supports me going into World Indoors next week. Uh, and I, I, don't have a world, I don't have a world in the middle. That's one middle I do not have. So, you know, yeah, I'm definitely going for the podium, meaning gold. Oh, yeah. We, uh, you know, we locked in. We, like Earl said, we might have a watch party or something, you know what I'm saying? Lock in. Yeah, definitely. The, the, the mind is ready, the body is ready. So, you know, the, it's left on me. My coach has done his job. And so now it's time for me to go out there and take care of business. Understood. Man, so I appreciate you pulling up on us. Like I said, virtual on the power. I appreciate you, Jay Law. Oh, of course, man. You know, I got to always keep it for the hometown. All right, really. I appreciate you. We'll be locking in soon, bro. We'll holler at you after, after the championships. All right, bro. I'm right, looking bro. forward to it. All right, bro. All right, man. Later.